And so that we can use our function notation, let's imagine that I just want you to consider this function. f of x is equal to this expression. Find me f of 3. Use your calculator if you need to find me f of 3. How would you find f of 3? What do you do with this, with this number right here? You plug it in. Correct. So the numerator becomes 3 squared plus 3 minus 6. 3 squared plus 4 times 3 plus 2. And you get, uh, you can do this with your calculator and have a problem. 9 plus 3 minus 6. I get what? 6. Over 9 plus 12 is 21. Plus 3 is 24. And when you reduce that, that turns out to be 1 what? 1 over 4. All right. So as a way of demonstration of a skill that I'm going to teach you in a moment, what I'd like to do is I'd like to challenge you. Uh, we won't put any money on the pie. We can do pie. We can do anything you like. But let's take two numbers that you can, that you can get. Um, Pick a number here. Five. 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 five? All right. So go ahead and uh, punch in five squared plus five minus six. Five squared plus four times five plus three. You're already working at your genie. <laughs> <laughs> I am working. Of course I'm working <laughs> now. And then we're going to start. Ask him questions. How did turkey come out? Very nice. <laughs> Show me it's finished. Uh, what? <laughs> I got a cap. Wait, wait. Come on, girl, don't disappoint me. <laughs> you probably have like all numbers like all, all numbers memorized? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh damn. Got it, sir. It's one guy. You got it Okay, yeah. let's try a different one. Uh, let's try, let's try a, a harder number because maybe this is too easy. So let's try maybe a two-digit number or something that's 64. 35. 39? Okay, I'm not telling you I'm going to memorize 39. Go for it. Thirty-seven forty-five. Yeah, no, no, no. No? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're wrong. No, you can't erase it. No, I got it first. Give me my money. <laughs> is that wrong? It, it is not thirty-seven over forty. Now it is. Oh, it is. You had forty-one. Over 40. We lost. Well, luckily we didn't have money on the table. Thirty-seven over forty. So five extra credit points for the class. <laughs> if I believe in extra credit, I would certainly give you extra credit. Now the point is this, right? You know me, and you know that I am not a human calculator. I'm not squaring 37 in my head and multiplying 37 by 4 and 3. So what, what, is the, what is the trick behind this? And I can do this with any number you give me. I'm going to beat you with a calculator. I, I don't have to pretend to be calculated. You know, I'll just write the answer as soon as you give me the number. 64. F of 64 would be uh, 62 60 fibs. What? That's, that's the answer. Now, I'm going to show you how I know that this is the answer. Not because I am computing at the speed of light. <laughs> something that I can do, right? But I have, I have given you a rational expression that can be simplified. Here is what we are going to uh, simplify. Simplifying. Simplifying rational expressions. Just like a fraction that you, uh, expressions that you uh, write with whole numbers, you know, like 4 eighths. Oh, you, can, you can reduce 4 eighths to 1 half, right? Or, you know, any, any fraction that you reduce. You can take polynomials 
like this one here, x squared plus x minus 6, x squared plus 4x plus 3. And you can attempt to simplify them. Not just like fractions, not all rational expressions can be simplified. But I pick one to make a little bit of a point here uh, to appear smarter than I am. Uh, I, I selected one that I could simplify before I put it on the board. I did this during break. Let's factor this out. Let's find the factors. You, you've done factoring. Let's see if we can express the numerator in factor form. You can use the x game. You can use guess and check. This is not a, a difficult one to, to do. Let's just factor this. I put x squared here, negative 6 here. I need two numbers that multiply together give me negative 6, and add it together give me positive 1. 3 and 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Which one should be negative? The 3. The 2. The 2, because I need this to be a positive 1, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? So I'm going to have over here 3x minus 2x. And then when I factor, I get x minus 2x plus 3. So I'm going to write that over here. x minus 2, x plus 3. That's my numerator. Let's factor the denominator. Just factor. x squared plus 4x plus 3. I'm going to let you do the, the box yourself. So just give me the answer. I'll write it down. I know I need an x times an x. It'll give me x squared. And I need two numbers that multiply together give me 3. And add it together give me 4. 1 and 3? Okay, so my denominator, right, can be factor as x plus 1 times x plus 3. What have we done in the past when the, uh, the numerator and the denominator of a fraction have a common factor? Cancel out. We can, what can I cancel out right here? x plus 3. So here's what we are saying. We are saying that this expression right here when you simplify it, it's equal to what's left? Two over one. X minus two over one. That's X one. plus one. Now I have a warning, I mean a warning clarification to tell you that this is true for any x value that you give me, with one exception, we'll talk about the exception in a moment. I just want to show you that when you were busy plugging in this number into this equation, the 3 into this equation, right? 3 squared, and I did this kind of like to divert attention, uh, to, to do step by step so that you would follow this and try to do a step by step. By the time you finish punches, punching this in the calculator, all I'm doing is plugging in whatever number you give me right here. So you're making a number. Of course. How hard, <laughs> how hard is it to subtract 2 and to add 1 to a number? Not very difficult at all. So for example, when you gave me 3, right, instead of plugging it here and doing all this work, we could have just said uh, f of 3 would be 3 minus 2, which is 3 minus 2 is 1, and 3 plus 1 is 4, which is exactly what we got. Then, <laughs> When you give me 64, instead of doing 64 squared plus 64 minus 6, I don't have to do that in my head. I cannot do that in my head. But I most certainly can do 64 minus 2. 62. 64 plus 1. 65. That's what you're going to get on this expression when you, because both of these are identical in value everywhere with one exception. And I'll talk about the exception. Josh, question. Brian. Brian. Oh, those last so the last two, the five, for this one, right, the, if you subtract two and you add one, for this one, this one was a little trickier because when you, when you subtract two from this one, what do you get? And when you add one to this one, what do you get? So three, six, that wasn't too hard to reduce in my head, and I just called it one half. And that was a nice example because that threw you off the pattern, that's right. This pattern is kind of... 37, 40, 62, 65. At some point you would have seen it if I kept doing problems. 
But the point is, you can have complicated expressions that you need to evaluate that can be evaluated with much simpler expressions. So you can create your own both sh shortcuts. You know, come up with come up with uh, any two polynomials. Um, just make sure you pick something they have in common here. For example, right? Let's, let's build one together that you can use make some money from your uncle at the next gathering <laughs> over a couple of beers. I think I can do this faster than you in a couple of um, You pick something like this, you know, x plus 5, x plus 5, the one that's going to cancel out. And then just pick something easy that you can do in your head. Something like x plus 1, you know, x plus 2. Something, that, something simple like that. So when you multiply this out, I'm going to let you follow this on your own, but you would get something like x squared plus 6x plus 5. And on the bottom, you would get x squared plus 7x plus 10. Now, suppose that this is f of x, right? And suppose now that I tell you, uh, I'd like you to figure out what is f of 5. Do you have to plug in the 5 in here and say 5 squared plus 6 times 5 plus 5? No, right? You know that these guys are going to cancel out. What are you left with? x plus 1 over x plus 2. So what would be f of 5? 6 over 7. I bet you if you do this here the long way and you simplify it eventually, you'll get to 6 over 7. But it'll take you a lot longer to do it if you plug it in here than if you just plug it in here. And these are equivalent rational expressions. Now, I told you that there's an exception, that this has to be stated with, with, uh, with a restriction here. This equation is true for all values of x except for one value of x. That if I plug it in here and I plug it in here, I get a different answer. You, you want to look at, look at where I started with. What is the one number that gives me a hard time? In the original, in the original problem here, since the original denominator was the product of these two factors, right? What number can I plug in here? Forget the fact that I cancel it out. Just pretend it's there. What number can I plug in here that would make this zero? What number? What, what value of x would make this expression right here that I'm throwing out zero? Negative three. Negative three. That's right. So if you, by chance, had given me f of negative three, I would have been in a little bit of uh, in a little bit of trouble because I would have, if I wasn't paying attention, I could have said three minus negative three minus two is negative five, and negative three plus one uh, is negative two. So my answer is five halves. And just as I'm ready to celebrate, you punch it in your calculator, and guess what your calculator is going to give you when you do it the long way is going to give you an error because negative 3 plus 3 would give you a 0 right here. That's 9 plus 3 is 12 and 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. So these two expressions are equal everywhere except when x equals negative 3. So this is called a restriction. x cannot equal negative 3. Clearly it cannot equal negative one either because we get zero over zero, but in that case both of them are undefined. But these are called restricted values, restrictions values of x. So when you simplify fractions, you need to tell me what are the values for which the equation doesn't hold. So you're going to simplify a fraction the same way that we, I mean, a, a, a rational expression in the same way that we simplify fractions.